Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave and today we've got a video about the X-Air 18. This console here is one that is, uh, is kind of a, a little brother to the X32 or the M32 consoles, which many of my videos are about. And I've had some requests recently because the, the, uh, the setup, the effects, and, and some of the routing are, are similar between the two consoles. And it's a great little device. I've got a number of uh, venues that I've worked with in the past that use these. They're portable, they're small, they come with a lot of features packed in. And so today we're gonna to talk about a video that I've done in the past on the X32, and it's about using your DAW as an additional effects rack. So that video you can see up here, uh, that video was posted in the past. Now I'm gonna link that in the description because there's a lot of content about the DAW side of things that you're gonna to need to check out in that video. I'm not gonna put that in this video, but in this video I am gonna talk about all of the aspects within the XR18 software of what you need to do to get the routing right. So let's dive into the computer and the console, here we go. All right, so as we get started here in the X-Air 18, uh, we do have kind of uh, this app up where we've got our list of inputs at the bottom. That's 16 uh, kind of XLR inputs, and then you have 17 and 18, which is an auxiliary input. You've got your effects racks on the bottom right here, and we're assuming that these are all used up, and you wanna get more effects or different effects that you can use and then bring back into the console. So we're gonna ship that process out to the DAW. Now, some assumptions I'm making is that if we look in the buses here, uh, you might have monitor on one, two, and three. Uh, four might be available. And then five and six we're using for our live stream mix. And then you can see your effects uh, inputs down here, your effects buses. So five and six is used up for the live stream. One, two, and three are used for monitors. So let's talk about how we're going to route this uh, both out of the console and then back into the console. All right, so in this case, we've got soundboard on the left-hand side. We are using the X-Air 18. And on the right-hand side, we have a DAW. Now, in my previous video, we go through how to handle the routing within Studio One as well as Ableton. But the important part here for this video is we're going to be using bus four for our mix of whatever we're gonna send into the DAW. We're gonna send that out USB three because we're assuming that our live stream is already going out bus one and or out USB one and two. So we're gonna mix on bus four, we're gonna send it to our DAW, and then the return here from our DAW is coming out uh, three and four, because again, one and two are already kind of being used up for our live stream in terms of uh, just keeping the routing clean. And so we're gonna send that across USB three and four back into our console. Now, it's gonna come in on our auxiliary end. This could be an issue if you're already running a computer source or an iPod source uh, into your sound console on auxiliary in, then you might need to make some changes. Maybe you have to give up two channels uh, and, and utilize this on two different channels, or maybe you just run all of that prefabbed um, audio music from this computer where your DAW is hosted so it can all come across USB right into your soundboard. So those are some decisions you're gonna to need to make, but let's look at the routing in the console with this basic setup. All right, so in here we've got our inputs and what we see first is that in this case, we do have iPod listed as auxiliary in, so we're gonna to need to change that. So if I right click, then this gives me the ability to uh, change this and I'll just say effects in. I might change the color of this and make it something that's different uh, than all the other things around it just so that I know uh, what's happening with it. I'm also gonna pull this fader down just as we get started. All right, so let's take a look at this effects in and just look at the channel strip and make sure that we don't have any of the effects turned on uh, on the channel strip. Now with the auxiliary in, you don't get compression, uh, you don't get gate, you only get EQ. The EQ is turned on, but you can see we don't have any, uh, any changes or alterations being made and that's fine. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is choose our bus four. Now, bus four, we can go ahead and call this, uh, let's say effects and then DAW out as an example. 
and we can maybe color this blue just to match what we're doing here with effects in that just keeps it clean maybe. Uh, so the, the output is at Unity and then we would build our mix. We would say for this case, maybe we want a, a chorus effect on our guitar. So we would just bring up guitar, send it into our DAW, build our chorus effect in stereo and send that back into the console on auxiliary in. But we're going to use that through USB. So let's go do the routing. We're going to come up to in and out. And on this, the way this is laid out, we have all of our inputs right now for our 16 channels. These are analog inputs. All right, we're going to look first at USB sends. And if we notice here uh, in our example that we talked about, uh, bus five and six are being used for our live stream. Those are set to post fader, as you can see by the, uh, the legend down here. But now what we need to do is set bus four. So bus five and six are taking up on the left-hand side, USB one and two, which is gonna take that into our live stream uh, software. Now USB three, we're gonna come here to the right and we're gonna find bus four and we're gonna click it. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna set this pre-fader and that is based on the output so that if you adjust the volume on the console going out, it's not gonna raise or lower the volume going into the DAW. So we're gonna set this as pre-fader so we can right click, choose pre-fader, and now it has a slightly purple look to it because it is set to pre-fader. So let's look at USB returns. And right now the way it's set up is you have a one-to-one -one mapping of all your 16 channels and then you have a stereo input on auxiliary for left and right. Now remember in our, in our picture, we're sending back in on three and four. So we're gonna come over here and select USB in to be three and four. But look, it's duplicating on the channels. So let's move these over to 17 and 18. That's just gonna keep things clean. Um, we're not gonna worry about one and two because again, that's kind of, we're mentally keeping one and two for our live stream. And so three and four can bring back our effects. So now from here, it should all be patched. We're gonna double check that everything is, is set up right. And we can do that by selecting this effects in right here. We're gonna hit channel, and then we can come over to input, and we can see that our USB is coming back in, and we wanna check the USB button here. That's gonna change our channel source to be sourced from this USB, which is channel three and four, and then you should be able to play your guitar, run that audio, route it into your DAW, make your changes, Route your DAW to uh, come back out, USB 3 and 4. And as it comes back in, if we go back to main left and right, it's going to come in on this auxiliary channel here. And now you have the ability to raise that up into your mix. You could come over and uh, only use that in, in the house and not send it to your live stream. You could send it by deselecting this. You can only make it available for your live stream if that's what you want. And to route this to your live stream, you would do it like any other channel. So you would come in, you would select your live stream here, and then you can raise this fader up according to what you need in your live stream. All right, well, I hope you found that video helpful. That is just a quick look at the XR18. If you're using the XR18 consistently, let me know in the comment section below. And if there's any other videos that you want to check out or things that you want to learn about on this console, let me know that too. Well, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and feel free to share this with anybody else that you think would benefit from these informational sessions on the XR18. Well, thanks so much for sticking around. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.